But Iran had no money when I was in charge. They had a lot of money when I started. They had no money when I finished. And now they have $300 billion and another $300 billion from their wholly owned subsidiary, Iraq. It's a wholly owned subsidiary. They probably don't like it when I say that, but that's true. Iraq doesn't like it. But they have $300 billion also from oil. Remember, I used to say, don't go into Iraq. Don't do it. The Bush. Don't do it. Don't go into Iraq. But they went into Iraq. Then they were there. I said, all right, you're there. Keep the oil. Just keep there. Remember, I used to say, keep the oil. You know, Iraq has more oil than almost anybody. It's like massive. But they didn't keep the oil, and they have hundreds of billions of dollars right now. Under my administration, we had no war in the Middle East. We had no war in Europe. We had harmony in Asia. We had no inflation. We had no Afghanistan catastrophe. Instead, we had peace, peace, peace. We had a lot of peace. But when I was president, Iran was in total check. The Iranians were starved for cash. Uh, nobody was buying their oil. And uh, they were ready to make a deal. They wanted to make a deal. They wanted to do something. And a uh, terrible thing. You know, we got more votes in the second uh, election, as you know. We had 2016, 2020. We got millions and millions more votes the second time. And they missed by just a little sliver, right? They said, somebody said, like, 18, 19,000 votes. It's just a disgrace. Uh, they're not going to be able to do that a second time. They're not going to be able to do that a second time. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris made Iran rich in a very short period of three and a half years. They have $300 billion now. They're rich. I mean, they pay $6 billion every time they have a uh, — if they have somebody that was kidnapped, it's always $6 billion. Who ever heard of that? Somebody else gets like $4,000. How much do you want? Uh, give me 2000 bucks. You have anything? $6 billion. It's always $6 billion. With Russia, it was $6 billion. And they also got back their spy, the greatest spy, they say, perhaps. He was a spy, but he was really more of an arms merchant. And the greatest arms merchant, the greatest buyer of military equipment, they say, anywhere, at any time. They got him back. But we got our basketball player back. That was the trade. Well, that is true. She used to tie her sneakers during the national anthem, right? And we got her back, and they got the, the best, the best. And I'm not saying he's a nice human being, but he was the number one arms dealer in the world for a long time. But Iran, Iran was uh, on the verge of bankruptcy. They had no money left. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah, the people they're fighting now. Uh, they would have been willing to make any deal. You could have made any deal, but Kamala flooded them with American cash. And even now, I mean, they're flooding them with cash. It's, it's Honestly, it's not even believable. It's like men and women sports. It's not believable. It's like open borders. Why would they want an open border? Let, you know, it's so stupid. We're the party of common sense, by the way. We are the... I like to say it all. Forget... Forget conservative. Yes. Or, but, you know, more with a party of common sense, because it's really more common sense than anything else. We want borders. We want fair elections. We want honest elections. And if you don't have those two things, you don't have a country, really. And we don't have a border. We had coming into our country in the last three, three and a half years, more than 21 million people. And many of those people were people you do not want to have in your country. And we'll discuss that in a couple of seconds. But ever since Iran has been exporting terror all over the world and uh, it's been uh, just unraveling. The whole Middle East has been unraveling. But, of course, the whole world has been unraveling since we left office. 